FlyQuest and who will be going to MSI after spring wraps up. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Azale and Kobe for what I'm hoping is a five-game banger. Gentlemen, are we ready? I'm the only one who predicted five, though. You guys both predicted three. I win either way. I'm either right or we get a better series okay, than I predicted. Okay, okay. All right, I'm exactly. playing the mind games, boys. And already we are getting an exciting game because Team Liquid are trying to do a little bit of what FlyQuest did. <laughs> In game number one, they let Kalista uh, and Renata go through as a pairing for Cloud9. Cloud9 immediately snatched them up, but were unable to snowball and win the game. And a lot of it was they got outraged. And let's look over what's over on the other side. Yeah. You have Varus. This could be Pope Varus paired up with the Ziggs that has been so successful for APA, has been very good on the Ziggs, on the Aurelian Soul. We have to find what are the adjustments that Cal9 has actually made after that FlyQuest series where they got thoroughly outplayed. And I think this draft is really interesting too because you have some pretty normal bands on C9 side. Talia, the Rel, <laughs> the Ash. Over on Team Liquid, it's Yone, Nico, Ari. It is a triple ban towards JoJo. Remember, this guy who's normally been the star for C9 got absolutely Ooh. crushed in their series against FlyQuest. And Team Liquid looks to want to target him as well. It'll be Oriana locked in for JoJo. Exactly. They're going to be able to grab the Oriana here for JoJo. Not something that we're as used to seeing him play. Of course, Azir has been the same throughout all. All of playoffs. Me too, buddy! <laughs> Me too! <laughs> the Zyra! The Zyra is locked in for bottom lane! Some pushing power. Talk about some aggressive 2v2 on bottom lane. There's gonna be fireworks, there's gonna be junglers. And this is gonna be almost guaranteed, I think, Pope Ferris. I think you play probably double combat for bot sure. lane. You're gonna be really looking to play for that prio on bot side. This is really oppressive at times, and it's gonna be very difficult for Cloud9. If they're gonna be drafting hard engage alongside the Orianna, there's some really good disengaged champs here. Not only just the Ziggs, but also the Zyra there throwing down the plant, throwing down the ultimate in these team fights. It's gonna make things difficult, but this is really exciting because Zyra has just not been popular and competitive for so long. And there are so many junglers right now Woo! open. We're definitely gonna be focusing on these because Vi is still uh, unbanned as yeah. well. Vi, one of the perfect pairings here. That was used super effectively against APA to get a bunch of kills on him uh, early in the season, but it could be used on the other side as well. If you get that on bottom side, Ziggs only has to roam like half of the distance down to bottom lane to throw his ultimate down there. And both these bottom lanes being double range matchup uh, is going to be a lot of trading. So a little bit of extra damage goes a long way. We get the Nocturne ban and the Volley Bear ban already. I, I think it'd be crazy if we let the Vi through as well. Vi and Zin Zhao right now are both uh, pretty strong and good options. Mm -hmm. This is only the fourth Zyra support game this split in the major regions. It's actually three and zero though, Chris. Mickey X and Barrel all got a win on it. So does it does up. There you go. Good he poster. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point and yeah. got yeah. got the reaction that it wanted. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll see. Can Core JJ, um, who is a legacy Zyra player by the way, has played yeah. this champ a ton, even when it was not meta at all, keep that 100 percent win rate up for the world ride Zyra players. Okay, well that buy that you were talking about did manage to make it through. Three out of four of the bands in this second phase were targeted towards the jungle, but it was the Nocturne, the Volley that you mentioned, and Lee Sin alongside the oh. Twisted Fate band coming in there. Team Liquid locks in the Jax. This could go jungle, it could go top. Exactly, it has been getting a lot of popularity thanks to Milky Way, I think largely in part, in the jungle, but it definitely can be played top as well. Yeah, I think maybe if they pick a Blabber Zin Zhao here, then you would want to put it into jungle. Otherwise, probably go impact on on top side and with the hover over Maokai already, it looks like Cloud9, they're gonna have uh, Fudge and Blabber probably play some front line. They definitely need it. They definitely need that team fight. They need something to be able to force their plays. This is one of the critical issues Cloud9 yeah. came up against versus FlyQuest. They could not get their engage off. And I think Maokai would make sense because right now they have no go button, right? You know, the right. Maokai ultimate is potentially that flash in with Swiss Advance, Shockwave over the top. You throw the Hostile Takeover over all of that with the Maokai ultimate because that's such a good combo. The Maokai ultimate makes you all want to group and stand behind one guy. And then the Hostile Takeover is coming over the top and all of a sudden you have to spread and the chaos that can really ensue there is difficult to deal with. Now the answer will be found out. Is it gonna be that Jax jungle? And with the Cassante getting locked in, it is gonna be Jax jungle. It will be that Cassante top. 
and we'll get to see how Umti does on this because I feel like this is not really a, a champion that fits the style that he generally plays where he is very much a player that likes to play for the team, sacrifice his own farm. On Jax, you need to be greedy. You need levels. You need farm. You need gold to be able to be having a big impact in the game. So you already mentioned it for C9, a lack of go buttons before the Maokai was locked in. Team Liquid doesn't exactly have any huge engage mechanisms either. I feel like for a comp like this with Varus and Zyra and Ziggs with all this range, with all this control, you want to be able to force them to check into you. Yeah. So I feel like there could be a lot of problems here for TL if this comp falls behind. I agree, absolutely. Another thing that they do have though that is really strong, they have a lot of wave clear and the potential, if Jax gets ahead, you can split push as that Jax. You know, even if it is coming out of the jungle, if you have a lot of that gold, you can play through side lanes. We've seen APA do that quite effectively on a lot of different champions as well. Uh, so we'll have to see if they can make it work. Super excited for this one. APA on the signature Ziggs, also another big story. Last time around, they played Cloud9. Uh, you know, JoJo was talking a lot of trash to APA and saying he's a one trick, and then they gave him his one trick and they, they lost to it. So <laughs> we'll see if you give him the Ziggs again and lose to it in game number one, that's gonna have repercussions for the entire best of five draft. Exactly, and this is something that we've actually kind of wondered about. And Medius was talking on the dive when he was talking to some of the Cloud9 guys, I think it was Jojo and Blabra that he was, he was actually having this conversation with. You know, why does everyone give APA his Ziggs, his A-Soul, when those are known as his best champions? And the answer from those Cloud9 players was, because their bot lane is too good. If you don't ban out the bot lane, you just will lose to Yon and Core JJ. So some respect being given over to those two guys. All right, we're on to Summoner's Rift for the first time today in this best of five. There's already a little spice going off in the all chat. You still think you can play mage? <laughs> Crazy! As JoJo reminds APA that TL still got an import oh. slot for summer. These guys are yapping straight out the gate, and I wouldn't want it any other way. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to Impact. Passes Bjergsen for the second most LCS games played all time. Now only behind Wild Turtle, who is alone at the top, but Impact has been here for so long and had success with so many different teams. It really is an incredible career. All right, level one. Only real notable thing is that we did have Fudge move into the red buff and get that ward down on red buff. You can see on the mini map right now. So Renekton gets in there, uh, does at least get the knowledge of where Umpty is going to start on which side. Raptors, of course, awarded as well here by Team Liquid. So let's take a look at the early pushing with both Comets hitting. Yep, we've also got cleanse on both of the marksmen this time around. Very much understandable. There is a lot of lockdown that guarantees a lot of damage coming out from either direction. Yeah, and it is double comment as expected here from Yon and Cordjj. Cordjj also playing Ignite, so definitely playing pretty aggressively in this matchup. They're gonna see if they can actually get the push. And it is gonna be a very exciting bottom lane. You know, it's trying to set up these plants, trying to push for that level two, really contest. You wanna have Berserker lock under his tower as much as you possibly can. And it's been so fun too, because Core JJ, like I was saying in Champ Select, even when Zyra was nowhere close to the meta, he was always spamming it in in-houses in Champions queue. Yep. This is one of the guys that has kept alive this aggressive Zyra support play. They get level two at the same time though, so nothing there. Ziggs Asol, this is the record on it. Seven and three for APA. Everything else, a combined six and nine. So definitely performing so much better on these champions. People criticize the guy, but he really can make it work on these control mages. He's very adept at getting to the late game and performing in those team fights. Umpty going top, might be looking for the play here on Fudge, who's trying to play around the brushes, but the Antofo strikes connect. Umpty is there. Impact just punches him right in the gut for first blood. Now APA's gotta be careful. He's already spent the flash, and JoJo hits right back. It's a one-to-one -one game before three minutes. Nice, both junglers with the three camp into gank, and both of them get successful ganks at that. Flash used there by Blabber, but it was also APA using his, and again, this Ziggs now with no flash. This is a strategy in the regular season that a lot of teams took versus TL. There was camp APA and, and try and get a... <laughs> 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 That's a spicy one. You, kn you knew as soon as he got that kill in mid lane with the way that the game opened in all yeah. chat, there yeah. was going to be a follow-up. Yeah, Someone else has to do the timers because the mid laners are going to be timed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the flash. <laughs> they don't have time for that. They're keeping track and flash, Kobe. Here's the first one, though. Umpty, uh, it gems like you mentioned Milky Way and, of course, you know, him playing a bunch of Jaxes and Kindreds and, Jax. and getting... That's what I was thinking when I was watching this yeah. is they kind of paused a little bit like they were going to give the last hit and the kill to the Jax. 
Um, I wonder if to try and got, really get him fed. Got maybe a little bit nervous when he got stunned. When the Jax got stunned, he's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to risk it. I, I right. think he would have been fine to take it. Um, and you definitely want to get that Jax fed. But at the end of the day, it's not that big deal. Yeah, game is still tied up. One to one, gold dead even. Blabber just farming up those chickens as JoJo makes sure he puts down the control ward to maintain control and vision over their own side of the jungle here, especially up against Umpty. Emily always likes to talk about this. Umpty loves playing in the enemy jungle, especially early, so keeping an extra eye out for where he's going to be pathing on this Jax, very, very important for C9 in the early stage. Yeah, and important for him to keep up his farm too. Uh, this is a carry jungler. Uh, very, very aggressive look from Umpty, and there's no wards around top side of mid lane. He does pop the Scryer's Bloom, though, so they know that he is here. JoJo should not get caught off guard at all. He just hit that plant. He's walking too far forward. Oh, yeah, JoJo huh. knocked forward here. Counter-Strike with a Leap Strike right next to it. As All right, JoJo gets away. He saves the Flash, recognizing he doesn't need to spend the Summoner spell, but he does get chunked pretty heavily. And that was a good uh, Satchel Charge from APA to knock JoJo towards Umpty. Uh, it looks like JoJo was confident in wasting a bit of that Jack's time, even with the Scryer's Boom being popped and knowing that he's on the top side. He didn't like aggressively go all the way to hover bottom side of mid lane. And it is going to be the trade of those early game objectives since Umpty uh, did exit mid lane right back through the top side and, and go up towards Grubs. Blabber's just going to move on down towards bottom side and try and control your dragon stacking with your Callista Renata lane. Yeah, we haven't touched on it too much, um, but Jan is actually down a couple waves already in bot side. So he's going to be able to pick up a bit of this farm, but he's, he's down, you know, wave and a half or so uh, this early on. So they yeah. haven't really been able to maintain the push. They really wanted to get Berserker and Vulcan pushed in and poke them out on their tower. But because Vulcan and Berserker have been able to, you know, maintain that push, they've been doing a good job actually sidestepping a lot of these skill shots. Well, they're locking Jan under his turret. That's why Blabber is very happy to play down towards this bottom side of the map. Berserker and Vulcan try and play off this snowballing bottom side, give up those early grubs on the top side, especially with the top side successful gank that went through for Team Liquid for him. And there's been a lot of talk about, you know, how good is Berserker now? You know, is he him? Is he not him? We've had fellows yeah. talking about, you know, he, he used to be really intimidating. He used to be this really dominant player. He's not anymore. Whipple was one of the notable guys, you know, speaking about that. Uh, but they have had some really good early games. It just hasn't always been able to translate. You know, we think back to last week, had a great early game on the cluster. The Shockwave's going to connect. Oh, JoJo committing the ulti here. Staying right on top of APA. Needs a little bit more damage to finish him off. Doesn't quite find it. Oh, oh he shows up. JoJo wanted to flash to seal the deal, but APA drank his potions. It's a one for nothing for TL, and Impact is not going to stop just yet. Fudge now in danger, but he's got backup too. Blabber's coming in to save the day. The difference is 200 HP Renekton and a Maokai are not going to kill all out Cassante, so the edge still goes to Team Liquid. Yeah, difference between a jungler coming for the kill and a just save the day, push the wave out. All right, you're, we're not going to lose, but where's the clap back? Everybody wants to know that all chat after that. You know JoJo flashing under tower <laughs> to try and get the kill with his uh, extra auto there doesn't get APA. He's really going to have some oh, spicy. He hit him with the, you're not him, little bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. Again. And JoJo does not have a flash this time. They don't get on him fast enough to keep him away from the safety of the turret. But man, it's getting spicy here in the mid lane. I love it, boys. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a lot of fun, but... Uh, yeah, Berserker, great early games last last week. You know, had a, had a big lead on the Callista, similar to what he has now. Uh, wasn't able to translate that and had a five kill Zeri game that he was not able to turn into a win. But here it is, Jojo definitely would have had the kill in the 1v1, but MT shows up. He realizes yeah. he's not going to be able to get out. He flashes in, but the potions were running. Had the Three biscuits. HP. Three HP. Three. Three. That's the biscuits right there. Yup, that's just drinking your potion in time. That's one of the most tilting things in League of Legends. We're like, at least I'll take him with me, yeah. but not quite single End digit health. Flash. Yeah, that's tough for JoJo here in the mid lane. He drops the Shockwave again on APA. Fudge is coming down. APA trying to take JoJo with him, and he's going to get it done. He will die to the rope from Fudge, but the one for one trade, it works out for Team Liquid's mid lane. Okay, so how important are mid kills uh, compared to mid mental? Because everybody, <laughs> everybody is getting in on the mid mental game now. Fudge with the roam down and flash in for the kill. But as you said, APA still getting the counter kill with his yeah. ultimate there. Wait. Oh, Jan forcing out the cleanse from Berserker there with the Chains of Corruption. So setting him up for a follow-up play, potentially. 
I mean, fi fighting over uh, mid lane mental and mid lane focus actually could be a big issue here. Bottom side, though, uh, is going to be the first time that we get a really big pushback here for Core JJ and Yawn. This is a giant stack wave. That's got to either be some turret play money. Uh, Jax actually goes back into the jungle, though, so maybe they get punished by sticking around for turret plate money. All right, let's see here. Those piercing arrows will continue trying to poke Berserker and Vulcan, but the Maokai ulti is already coming in. Yawn eats the ulti and then uses Ooh, the cleanse. Vulcan good flash, good flash. tried to flash Handshake, but it does not yeah. work. So C9, yes, they're going to get both summoner spells out of Yawn, but they will not get any kills. Yeah, that was well played there by TL, though. Yawn had to block it. If the ult hits Core JJ, he's 100% dead, so you yeah. have to block it and cleanse. And then Vulcan looks for the correct play, the follow-up, but the, the flash, the cleanse were really fast there from Yawn, gets the minions in between them. I think well handled by both sides there. Mm hmm Good reactions there. Yawn, definitely somebody who has had a spotlight on him recently, especially for playoffs here for Team Liquid, with them spending so much time <laughs> bringing him up <laughs> as we get uh, act, <laughs> act three of our mid lane banter. And I feel like Jojo, he's got a little bit of something to prove after last week, where he became one of only two mid laners ever to go through an entire series without getting a kill. Uh -huh. It was kind of ironic because he did it against Jensen, and Jensen was actually the only other mid laner to ever be shut out for a kill in a playoff series. Uh, so Jensen had it done to him and then did it to Jojo. Yeah, well, both mid laners on the board. Uh, this time around, as the Grubs are causing a ruckus. Yeah, C9 sending four players up to deal with these. Team Liquid has already claimed four Grubs. They got the first three in that objective trade that we talked about, and they already claimed one here in the second set. But C9 is going to try to stop them from hitting that five Grub breakpoint. Nice long range chains! Oh. And the beautiful snipe to follow it up. Yon and Core JJ get the 2v1 kill on Berserker to punish the roam from Vulcan for the Grubs. And the thing that makes that so much more impressive is the earlier chains of corruption that forced out the cleanse from Yon. Immediately when the cooldown's back up, he instantly hits it on him again. This time they know he does not have that cleanse. You have to hit him back to back like that. And this is the stats I was talking about. Jojo with one of the worst series, well, probably just the worst series he's ever had in his career. You know, he's expected to dominate against APA. You know, really wants to have a bounce back one here. Yeah, and the, the entire team of Cloud9, that series versus FlyQuest was surprising even to FlyQuest members, they were saying. But the whole reason this play goes off is because you get the support roam up to Grubs. And oftentimes people have tried to use those support roam timings to get really, really aggressive. The most painful thing there for Berserker is this uh, is a giant wave at his tower too. They didn't even need the Ziggs ult yeah. damage as, that we were mentioning from Champ Select of being able to roam halfway down and add that. Uh, Yana Court JJ took care of things themselves. You leave someone in a 2v1 versus Zyra uh, and Varus, it's gonna be pretty hard, but really big props to Yon for at least hitting the ultimate there. That Varus ultimate started the entire thing off. Yeah, and I think Berserker just would have had an early flash, but it seemed like he thought he was out of range because that was the very edge of the Chains of Corruption that did actually connect. Okay, so importantly, C9 is starting up this Drake while the ultis for Team Liquid are still not fully ready just yet. It looks like Yon has Chains of Corruption, but APA still needs a few more seconds and then they get Inferno Bomb, and Core JJ just now getting his ulti back up as well. So C9 forcing this down during those precious few seconds where Team Liquid is not at full fight capability. It means C9 gets a two for nothing Drake lead, and they kind of need that since TL's up one and a half thousand gold. Yeah, both teams are kind of focusing on, on the areas that they really want because Cloud9 is going to want to have this, this team fight for later where they group up as five and they need to be able to force you to come to the dragons so that they can look for these Maokai ultimates to get their engage for the five on five. But TL, they're playing very, very high range here. Lots of poke damage. And whenever you run a comp like this, you want a bunch of early gold yeah. so that you can then siege up, snowball these outer towers uh, and really increase the gold lead. So Team Liquid are pretty happy. They got the the Ghost Blade already done here on Yon. Uh, despite some of the uh, early CS deficits, they've made that up uh, pretty nicely with the tower dives that they did. A lot of uh, minions denied there and got some turret plates by Core JJ. Core JJ in some trouble as Berserker and Blabber are in the enemy jungle. The Zyra is locked up and he will not live through that one. Berserker gets the kill. That'll be his first of the game trying to get this Kalista where he needs to be for the yeah. mid game team fights. Nicely done there. Getting a catch on Zyra. This is, of course, one of the major weaknesses that every pro will tell you about these style of champions. If you're playing <laughs> Brand or Velkaz or Zyra or whatever, it is hard to play for vision, right? Yep. And especially when he 
doesn't have a tank jungler who just wants to walk around and play for vision the whole time you said it earlier Jax needs to farm Jax needs to keep those camps up keep the xp up keep that gold coming in so you can't just be sitting with his ira the entire game doing nothing whereas maokai with a night spell he's full build baby he's let's go yeah <laughs> what is zyra zyra's favorite part of the game is usually like lane phase you're really bullying people yeah yeah especially when no junglers come but once you have to start roaming around especially when you have to roam around mid lane those Ugh, no no yeah those uh those champs can definitely burst you down uh, and that one he even just got invaded on in his own jungle so have to be very cautious we'll see a lot of this linking up of junglers plus supports to go get vision tl it was pretty interesting listening to the pros podcast too because um, both inspired and whippo were talking about how aggressive tl have gotten uh, and it really shows in the combined kills per minute stats for this team from regular season to playoffs uh, but a lot of it comes off of the back of their aggressive looks to get vision where umpty and core jj are just running straight into your jungle to try and get the wards first and then they get those kind of camping vision plays that turn into some of the snowball kills i also really like that core is just rushing straight towards the andrews i sometimes see people go for ludens and stuff like that and i just think that with the plants applying the landry so easily it is so worthwhile and even in these fights where you don't really want to focus on core because in a 5v5 you kind of have to deal with apa and yawn first you just alt up some plants they can do a ridiculous amount of damage if you're yeah. ignoring them they hurt a lot when they're buffed up with the blessing from the ulti but it's c9 right now focusing on the rift herald they've decided they're just going to burn this down before team liquid can respond tl does have a ward here in the pit umpty drops down another to get the leap strike in and be ready to contest this here with a smite berserkers made his way over and he already popped his cleanse as that means Rift Herald goes the way of Team Liquid. They'll just force C9 off the objective. I want to get another look at all chat. Do they say TY for leash in this one? Or is it only mid laners that <laughs> only talk? Mid -laner, it's only, only mid laners. Only mid laners. Okay, okay. No jungler talk because you know that's a thank you for the leash, my friend. Thank you for your mid tower. That thing is super duper gone. They can even blow it up with Ziggs before the charge goes off. So Harold doesn't even get hurt. And uh, that is that is the biggest number one goal that you're trying to look for with poke comps is get your mid lane tower down. Yeah. Then they can start to snowball across the map here. Makes it so much more difficult for Cloud9 to rotate uh, to the other sides and protect their territory. They want to get this Herald charge on the tier two. Kaboom, they'll do it. Get some about 40% of the HP off of that one. So some Herald value at least derived despite the fact that they bursted down the tier one too fast. Yeah, it is still nice because you're stopping that up for Ziggs later. Yeah. Also, no one's answering APA. This is something he's played really heavily towards when he plays these control mages he's constantly out to the side lanes kills another tower as they kill the mid tier one they soften up the mid tier two so next one team fight they can walk down mid take that tier two as well this is more and more gold being put into the coffers of tl apa knows his job he is a demolitionist takes care of mid lane immediately starts rocking down to bottom lane work 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 two towers down bunch of gold ballooned here for tl and they can start opening up the map. Dragon number three is only 30 seconds away here. Cloud9 would want to get there first. You don't want to let TL get there and, and get time to poke you. The more time, the bigger the advantage here for TL in this long range. Looks like uh, Fudge actually staying on top side. He's got his Unleashed Teleport ready here for Renekton. And I think it goes back to a little bit of what you were talking about earlier, Isaac, is people comment on APA's champ pool. They say, yeah, he's a two trick. Well, champ pool doesn't oh, matter if you're Umpty's never forced into the deep end as Umpty no has tower. found his way for a pincer attack on Jojo Pion. This is the target so often when teams find out how to take down C9. Jojo's already gone and blabber has got to be careful because Core and APA are also forcing him away from the fight. Team Liquid have answered the challenge for the contesting of Drake and they've done it beautifully. The jungler's almost dead. The mid laner's fully dead. The Drake is alive and TL is walking right on over. It's a dream scenario for Umpty. I mean, he had just finished his Trinity Force on Jax. You're like, please give me kills. And APA just killed the bottom side tower. It's just, this is the new Team Liquid. They do not wait around. This is not your grandma's eighth combined kills per minute in the league, <laughs> Team Liquid. Sorry, they, Grandma. <laughs> they have turned it up for playoffs. They will constantly push the game state here. And with those two towers down, they keep up the pressure. They take away the dragon stop the cloud nine stacking here and they keep up the siege as well and it's just such a nice play now that's softened up mid lane tier two blabber's trying to pull the minion so ap can't walk up and finish it but it is really close to actually just getting satchel charged down it was just a great play from umpty you know the ward hop over the wall gets behind jojo they call in the tp whoa get that pincer play and fudge is in trouble now yeah impact went all out to bring him over the wall but now impact is the one who dies nicely reversed by c9 yeah, Vulcan's there, has the hostile takeover, and JoJo has respawned. He's back with the shockwave to be able to burst down impact. So they do get one back. 
And the gold is closing slightly off the back of that as TL was nearly 3k up. Uh, pulling it back towards that though. I like the fact that they went for the handshake play on the Varus there, but unfortunately the turret just explodes under the might of this Ziggs. The siege power on this thing is just ridiculous. And just look at how much vision they actually have in that bot side and how little Cloud9 has as we talk over to them. There's like five, six TL wards in the Cloud9 bot side jungle. Yawn maybe, no, oh, Yawn misses Chains of Corruption and he immediately pops the cleanse as Blabber goes in. Vulcan has to flash away from the Mega Inferno Bomb, but he still gets tagged by the outer edge of the damage. Umphy pressing the attack towards Blabber as Team Liquid doesn't have enough firepower to secure any of these kills. Kills. They're gonna get everybody else away for now. Meanwhile, back in mid, Berserker is just pushing onto the tier one as Fudge shows up bottom to try to stop some of the recalls. Meanwhile, Jojo, what are you doing there? APA sits him down. But now Blabber and Fudge are surely gonna get something back. Core JJ walks away, and APA is just gonna waste as much of their time as he can. It won't be much. Shutdown goes over to Fudge. And actually, one of the biggest things in these last couple of kills that happen are the flashes that were blown. I think it was a really smart job of Team Liquid baiting here because they were able to get Blabber's flash as well. And if you're a team that has to get the engage because you're shorter range and your Maokai no longer has flash and they also use the ultimate there, it makes it so much more difficult for Cloud9 to play to their win cons here, whereas Team Liquid, so much easier. We've got the range and all of our range champs have their flashes ready. Okay, C9 looking to finish the job here in mid lane. Going after that T1 that Berserker was putting the work in earlier. Nicely done, they'll pick it up and they'll bring this gold lead back under 2,000. Yeah, some of the major items now getting completed though. Core already has his Leandri's done. Leandri's just got finished up as the second item there for APA. Uh, we can see Umti, you know, he's had that Triforce for a while. He's gonna be working towards his second. Are you thinking Sundered Sky next? Yep, yeah. it's just so good. It's with, really good. With, <laughs> it, it makes your team fighting insane because you can get so many heals. Um, cooldown reduction, the stats are just really good on it. Umpty and Impact here gonna go take care of the top wave first as they just clear out and establish their vision control first over the objective. Now they can just poke you out and, and uh, make it much more difficult for you to even move up. We are past the 20 minute mark now, so if we get one of those really bloody fights that only goes one way, we've seen both these teams have some pretty early Barons in previous series. Next, Drake not spawning for another two minutes, but I expect that one to be highly contested as well. I do like the Mikhail's rush here for Vulcan. Again, I think this is really intelligent. When you're looking over at Chains of Corruption, when you're looking at a Flash Counter-Strike, you know, a Flash Root or something like that from Core JJ, TL doesn't have the most reliable go buttons. It is more that stuff from range. Yeah. And he should be able to answer that pretty easily with the Mikhail's. That plus Bailout plus Hostile Takeover makes it so hard to just hard commit on one member from Cloud9. It's a 4v4 here in the mid lane. As Blabber fires off the ulti, it finds a Root onto two. He's gonna be your target here with the front, but the counter strike to get him away. Blabber chases him over the wall. Beautifully done from Umpty to drag the C9 jungler away to the wrong spot. Impact makes his way into the back line at the same time, and now Jojo's in some trouble as Impact goes all out. He's looking to finish the kill, but the bailout might be able to keep Jojo alive. No, it will not. Oh. Team Liquid has found two kills, and C9 gets a whole lot of nothing. Impact teleported in way earlier than Fudge did, and Impact's teleport location here behind the rest of Cloud9 completely changed changes the fight. They try and get away. They cannot escape as low as they get him. Now on to Baron. And how do you get through the poke wars? You got a bomb field that you have to get through over here. And the nice part is, you do have some Baron damage in the form of the Zyra and the Jax to deal with taking this down while these two poke masters just force the enemy team off. I was talking about early Barons from these teams and Team Liquid secures the first Baron of this series before 22 minutes. So much damage. I, I can't wait for this replay because just look how much damage we get here uh, with the TL turn on their focus. Core JJ takes point here really far up in the lane as Umpty walks back on the Jax and it's a pretty good Maokai ultimate. You can see they're trying to handshake him back and so they don't soak all the damage, Ziggs but Ziggs gets three and then Yon's ultimate also forces the cleanse and that was at the exact time that Blabber went in. So really good job pulling Blabber away from the rest of the team. Your Ziggs ult zoned out the rest of Cloud9, uh, forcing so much damage onto them and then pulling Blabber away from the rest of the team. Just such good separation uh, and small timings here from Team Liquid in the team fight, not to mention the uh, teleport from Impact that we already highlighted. Yeah, and kind of heartbreaking there for Cloud9, not able to finish off Impact. If he had died, maybe they have some sort of an angle to get over towards Baron. Yeah. You know, he cancels the all out and has his Econ back up for that little shield right as the Ren came in from Berserker, and Berserker just didn't quite have enough damage. 
And now TL very far ahead. The only real advantage that Cloud9 had from the early game was again those dragons. That's completely equalized. It's TL with nearly a 4,000 gold lead and the ability to take a lot more of these towers off the map. I gotta say, I love the Team Liquid makeover that we have seen from regular season mm -hmm. to playoffs. We had so many episodes of the dive where we're talking about, oh my God, TL, all they do is look for dragons and scale. You know, they, they're always trying to get the Aurelian soul, the smolder, that's it. Now though, they're playing so much more aggressively lit it, uh, with it. They're taking so many earlier timings on fights and they're utilizing this zig strength of destroying the towers to just completely move up the timers really impressive stuff especially this time around from team liquid four and a half thousand gold lead uh plus the baron now makes it super easy to continue sieging and so the question, hold on now, APA getting caught with a shockwave there, the chains of corruption aren't gonna find a whole lot. Blabber sending out the ulti, impact disengages. Yawn and APA are not the ones under threat. It's not like you can just force something on to impact. Team Liquid continuing their pressure. Blabber not gonna get hit by the piercing arrow, Mega Inferno Bomb, it hit, but it doesn't really even look like it. The damage not super impressive on that one as TL continues their pressure. The question I was going to pose before that scrap is, how worried are you about this game state from the point of view of C9? I mean, I think it's over, honestly. Like, I, th I think it's all, uh, so hard to actually come back from this position with how TL are playing, playing heavily through sides, being first to the objectives, you know, not allowing Cloud9 to really have that setup that they need to be able to make these fights work. I think it is going to take a miracle for Cloud9 to be able to come back from here. Uh, TL are just looking bulletproof, and they have so much damage now, plus the gold advantage. If you walk in, yeah, sure, that didn't do that much to Blabber, but Blabber's having to retreat from his own tower because of Poke. You hit JoJo with one or two of those spells, the fight's already done before it starts. Yeah, here is where I would try and get the other side and be like, oh man, but Cloud9 have a good team fight, you know, if they get there engaged, then it can be explosive and you'll usually get a bunch of kills uh, and snowball that way. But this game also really reminiscent of the first game of Cloud9 series versus FlyQuest, mm -hmm. where, like we highlighted, they gave him the Berserker, Callista plus uh, Renata bottom lane early on and then played outrange played this big damage into it. FlyQuest was, a was able to do it uh, in the outscale and Team Liquid are actually doing it in a very fast pace, only 25 and a half minutes. So I feel pretty confident in, uh, in TL's new look here. This is gonna be one of the hard parts though, is when you crack the actual inhibitor turrets. Right. So there are still openings for Cloud9 to try and go for and get that dream team fight. The Maokai plus the Orianna have opportunities here. Orianna, if JoJo can get to level 16, he's really far away from it. It's almost a full level away right now, but uh, the rank three Orianna ultimate would go a long ways there as well. I think the reality is though, I don't think TL are actually gonna push for the inhibs for a long time. I think they're just gonna take over the enemy jungle, start farming multiple quadrants of the map and just slowly increase that lead play for dragons say you have to come blind through your own jungle into us into this poke every single time yeah we're not gonna risk walking up to your base and giving you that hard engage just allow him to farm three quadrants become a monster to where no one's even gonna be able to answer him in the side lane like he should even win 1v1 against fudge probably at this point uh, he's already level 14 he's got two items working on his third and at that point the game plan here for TL all they really need to worry about then is keeping your wards really far up on Cloud9 to make sure C9 can't get any, you know, flanks off on you or you, the, the dreaded giant uh, dream team fight combo. Yeah. As long as you're able to keep vision, then you can play to that game plan and you can continue to slowly increase your gold, read, uh, gold lead and increase your resources. Plus, if Team Liquid do get to the point where they just control the entirety of the map for the next 10 minutes, they get those next two drakes, it's Infernal Soul. That is with so poke. nasty with a poke composition as the foundation you're building it on. Worth pointing out that next drake is spawning in just under a minute, but so is the Baron. These types of situations I always find very interesting how the teams choose to prioritize where they want to go and how they want to dance back and forth between these objectives. Yeah, it can become really difficult, you know, um, but for TL, they have so much of this vision prioritized toward that bottom side. They really want to play towards the dragons. And I don't know, you know, if you're C9 and you go up there and you start that dragon, or excuse me, you start that Baron, and all of a sudden you get caught in the pit, there's so much AoE, there's so much poke, it's going to be very, very difficult, even if you secure it, to be able to get out afterwards. So yeah. it would be a pretty bold move for them to actually commit to it. Yeah, the Ziggs Bomb plus the Zyra ult, the that Circle alone. of Doom. Yeah. Just, it fits so <laughs> conveniently right inside the Baron. Uh. <laughs> 
Let's see as oddly satisfying as mid tower is just going to get blasted, which wide open. Yeah, Fudge had to flash just to get away from this. Tier 3 turret is gone. We were talking about the difficulty of cracking the inhibitor turret wall. Team Liquid finds no such difficulty. Mid lane inhib down. Well, TL realized no one from Cloud9 is responding, so they have to be out over by the Baron. They have to be out getting vision. They have to be somewhere else on the map. They sat and they were very patient. Only one member walked up. It was Impact. The other four from TL all sat behind him until no one responds. And they're saying, okay, if you're not going to defend it, we're going to take it. And now they go back out on the map and they are the ones clearing out the vision, reclaiming it on that Baron area. And now the dragon has spawned. Look at the map on the bot side for Cloud9. No wards in sight. It is so tough. Here we go. This is see. it. The TP is coming in. Fudge is going to be behind Team Liquid. No, no. Yawn and APA are not aware. Blabber goes in for the flash twist in advance. And now APA is going to get locked up. They're ready to burst down the mid laner. But Zyra Zulti is right there to protect him. Yawn is already killed. The shutdown goes over to Vulcan. Opti wants to kill off Berserker, but he's found the kill that he needed. Now Vulcan's going to try to get away. Fudge is the one getting the kill on core. It's three dead on Team Liquid. Two dead on C9. Opti and Impact are trying to make the play. watered-down Smolder Pentas for so long. <laughs> that was a real one right there because that was the dream fight for Cloud9. It was, they yeah. didn't know that the teleport flank went off. So nobody scrolled over the map to see in the fog of war the, the teleport. And so that was the best opportunity that Cloud9 yep. could go for. Like that, they were like, this is perfect. And they even got the Maokai right in there. Maokai ulting across the uh, all of them. He W'd onto APA. Like, that's the best that you can do. And if Umpty does not Penta kill there, then they have a chance to come back in. That is the second jungler pentakill in LCS history. Oh yeah. Umpty stepping up. But look how perfect this fight was for yeah. Cloud9, and they still lose it. This flank from Fudge, he comes in, he forces the cleanse on Yawn, but the hostile takeover is already coming through. The hostile takeover comes out, the Maokai ult connects, everything connects across these multiple members. Yawn has gone instantly, and if you're watching the right so side of the good. fight, you're thinking, all right, Cloud9, I got this, but Umpty is just getting work done on the other side. In the back line, it's late game Jax, has multiple items completed, gets in on Berserker. Berserker can do nothing. Dude, this is that Umpty has got to be so full of adrenaline right now. Like, that feels so good. That was a real one. You know, thank you to Milky Way to start all of these uh, carry junglers going. Everybody now can, can live their best lives. We were talking about that being the dream engage for C9, but it was also the dream situation for a melee carry. You arrive five seconds late when all the big spells have already been cast. Crack your knuckles, it's time for a beatdown. <laughs> so beautiful. You know what happens now for the rest of the series? Uh, we get Sejuani Rail. Well, hey, 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 uh, <laughs> Nice foul wait, rush. Why can't Viper just pull out a carry too? How about Kindred? <laughs> I'm gonna hope he just cast or cursed that. We get more jacks in the jungle. But for now, let's head on over to the LCS Lounge to be